The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 7th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you listen at the normal time, 11.07, we're going to make this as pertinent as we can for you. But we are recording today's show between 8 and 9. If you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, well, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead, send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, inside our Tiger's Den, will any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got U.S. equity futures a bit mixed out here, and we expect it to stay that way through about 8.30 when the fireworks program begins. We've got the jobs report. It's first Friday of every month, and so that may uh, lead to some kind of fireworks. Right now, you've got the Dow equity futures up 52 with the NASDAQ down 42. The S&P is off two. The Russell's up three. So a bit of a mixed bag out there. Spot volatility still well above its 50-day exponential moving average. It's trading out at 30.35. That says that any rug pulls, they expect a move to the downside. Over in Asia last night, uh, you get the uh, Shanghai still close. It will reopen, I believe, on Monday. Nikkei was up 195 points. Hang Seng down 272. They're still trading above. I'm not showing the charts here, but they're still trading above their oscillator and change lines. and They've got bottoming patterns, and so they're suggesting they want to move higher. The uh, Europe this morning is a bit of a mixed bag. The uh, DAX is off a point, and the FTSE is up 11. Gold's off $3. Silver's up 6 pennies. Palladium's up 15 bucks. <coughs> um, platinum's up 15. Palladium's up 23. Wheat's up 9. Trade out at 888. The 30 year Treasury is uh, flat right now. She's trading out at 126.09. US dollar index, I do have a 10 minute delay here. It's off 7 ticks. Trade out at 112.10. What's all that mean? You know, one of the things we could do is just go take a look at nine panel market update chart. Good way to get kind of an overview. And we'll go look for some tells in the market. We'll take a look at Hector wants to look at CVE. Uh, G Man of the Dem wants to take a look at the TBT. So we'll do all those things here. But the real fireworks, and we'll look for tells. Although I will share with you, I haven't been able to find any just yet. But here, let's just uh, get an overview of the markets in general, uh, what they're telling us. Uh, the top panel here, we've got the ES Mini, and that is in the upper left hand condition. What you will see, or what you should see, is that we have on Monday, we had a buy the D point pattern. That was an A to B equals CD to the downside. That was at the 1 to 1.2. 272 level when the uh, bullish reversal candle formed on October the 3rd. All that that has led to at this stage here is a consolidation with inside that daily profile. A close today above 3807 would be a bullish indication for the ES Mini and suggest a further rally. With one of those price targets being 3898 to the upside, that is the bottom of the weekly profile. To the downside, price targets would either be the bottom of its, uh, the, its bullish structured area of its daily profile between 36.45 and 36.77. If we close below Monday's lows out there, we're headed lower out there. Geez, thanks, Steve. Oh, you're just so smart to be able to say that. Well, that's really what it would mean. If we look at that spot volatility, still well above its 50-day exponential moving average. Exponential moving average is 26.91. Price is printed out at 30.35. 
If we look at the NQ, same thing, formed a nice buy the D point pattern on Monday. Did that when it generated that bullish reversal candle? Price has just been consolidating with inside its daily profile. Resistance here, 11,841. A close above that would suggest a run up to the 12,404 level. A close to the downside, support is at 11,241. And then, of course, you've got the uh, low of Monday, if taken out, says we head lower. U.S. dollar index closed above the top of its uh, daily profile yesterday. That profile level is 111.91. If price remains above that this week, it's a real break. And that real break says it wants to go challenge that Rosemont Dominicator top that formed on the trading session of September 28th. That generates a resistance area of 114.74. If price closed above that, U.S. dollar index is headed higher. Goldilocks this morning is attempting to form a new daily profile. I say attempting to form because I'm using my advanced Doppler tool out there. So right now, as of 8, 11 in the morning, we know where buyers and sellers are taking their position with regard to Goldilocks, which closed above the top of its daily profile and is within inside its weekly profile area. But the new profile has a potential resistance level at 1738.70. That's where sellers are lined up as we speak right now. The bottom, where buyers are lined up, is at 1703.80 out there. The center, <laughs> excuse me. Centers at 1715. So it's a slightly bullish structured profile out there. So your real z buy zone or, uh, is in the 1703, 1715 area. But it's pretty narrow ranged um, profile. Now, I won't know until Monday, uh, Sunday night, if uh, this profile takes hold or not. We do have a new profile that did take hold inside of silver. Now, silver has a sell the D point pattern. We can just draw in here the A to B equals CD pattern. So you'll see that. And I say it has a confirmed sell the D point pattern because we got that bearish reversal candle a couple of days ago, the trade day of October the 5th. Now, so that would suggest that price should pull back. And not until price closes above the high of uh, the 4th, that high is at 2131, will silver be back in a breakout mode. Otherwise, price should pull back and test its oscillator and change line. Not shown on this chart here. But the, really, the point, one of the points that I wanted to make is that there is a new profile that has taken hold here. And that profile has formed below price. The top of that box, for example, price is trading at 2071. The top of the daily profile is 1926. The top of the weekly profile, 1957. We're trading above those. So you've got a bullish signal with regard to price trading above resistance. But you do have a bearish pattern until price closes above the high. But the new profile that is formed below price is a bullish signal. That doesn't mean that price can't pull back to the 1926 level or perhaps below that. But it's a bullish message overall. But right now we've got a bit of a signal that says uh, at least neutral. If we look at light speed crew, there's nothing neutral there. It's in high gear. That high gear, which has taken price uh, for the last three sessions above the top of its daily profile, should go target the top of the weekly. So 92.71 is its price target. Natural gas has a buy the D point pattern. Price is consolidating with inside its daily profile. Its levels of support are between 672 and resistance at 737. And a 30 year treasury, which we're going to go take a look at in detail for G Man and the Tiger's Den. We get back from this first breakout here. That also has a buy the D point pattern. It may have some other pattern out there on a daily basis. I don't know. And G Man, that's just simply led to a consolidation as, as well with inside its daily profile. 126.04 being a key level of support resistance out here 13110 for the December 30 year treasury bond Steve Rhodes with TFNN we'll be right back inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. 818 in the morning. U.S. equity futures are mixed at this uh, time. We've got about 12 minutes here before the uh, jobs numbers, before the real fireworks uh, begin. So in the meantime, let's go take a look at some requests that have uh, come in out here. The first one from uh, G-Man inside the Tigers. Then let's take a look at the TBT, which are the charts that we have up on our screen out here. This is, I believe, the two or three times short the uh, Treasury bond out here. And we're really going to go to the Treasury bond to really get its signals out here. But with regard to the TBT, the one thing we do notice is there could be a TD9 count top that forms between October and December. Uh, that uh, you already have bar number eight as the high. And if bar number nine completes uh, with a close above bar number five uh, this month, uh, you'll have a TD9 count topping signal that will be present out here. Uh, no topping signal on the uh, weekly, nothing on the uh, daily as we speak right now. But let's go switch over, take a look at the 30-year Treasury. And here we'll take a look at the daily as the longest time frame that we're looking at, all the way down to a 10-minute time frame chart. But it's a daily chart out here, the left-hand panel, that shows that nice TD9 count bottom, as well as a buy the D point pattern. So what the market is communicating to you is that uh, it wants to uh, try to form some type of short-term bottom. But this day here, price just consolidated with inside that daily profile. So you've got a bottom signal on the daily time frame, a bit of a consolidation. It's a bearish structured profile. So uh, not uh, unusual for price to find resistance at the center of that. If we look at a five hour time frame chart, there's no real signal as we speak right now. If I look at a 240 minute chart, no signal that I see out here, top bottom otherwise. The same thing for the two hour chart. I, on the 60 minute time frame chart, you do have a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern that is in place out here. And that says that a close below uh, the bottom of that, that candle from 11 o'clock on the uh, on yesterday morning, um, 125 and change out there would suggest lower price. So I see a few of those roads meant to indicator signals for the very short term time frame chart, but nothing has broken through resistance, not even on a 10 minute basis, which found resistance at its TD9 count breakdown area. So, gee, man, if you're asking, you know, what are what's the 30 year Treasury charts telling us right now as far as its direction? It's much like the market. We've got a bottom that formed on Monday. In this case here, it's not the it's not Monday that formed the bottom, but you do have a valid bottom, two valid bottom patterns out here. The price is consolidating with inside that daily profile. We just have to watch to see how 
price really reacts to the uh, jobs uh, data out there. Remember, that first reaction may just be a knee-jerk reaction. Hector wants to take, so I do hope that helps you out. It's the best that I can do at the uh, moment out here. But uh, we'll have some more information, I'm sure, within the next half hour. Uh, Hector writes in, he wants to take a look at uh, CVE. So let's get that uh, punched up on our screen out here. CVE is uh, what? CVE, and let me actually read the question. That would be helpful. That is uh, Senovis Energy. The question goes like uh, this. CVE last week of September backed into a, a swing point. Okay. Um, with almost 50% less volume, you loaded your wagons on a weekly. Can you please work some oscillator and change line support and resistance? Uh uh, great. So let's uh, take a look at the weekly time frame specifically. The weekly time frame, you are asking for the oscillator and change line. That is at 1883 as we speak right now. Price closed below that uh, yesterday, uh, or is, remains below that as of yesterday. Uh, you wanted to know the uh, other support and resistance areas. Well, you've got a TD9 count breakout support level, Hector and Patty, at 1553 which has been tested and is basically, I mean, it failed last week, but you're back above it this week. Um, so no other pattern or signal. You've got the market profile areas on a weekly basis. 1617 is support. 2103 is resistance. On a daily time frame out here, yesterday was bar number six of a TD9 count. Uh, I don't see any other pattern. You're above the top of the profile. You're above the oscillator and change line. The next area of resistance on a daily basis is around 1933 out here. But it does look like price wants to get back to its recent high sector. And that's the highs from August 25th, and that's in about the 1999 area out there. On a monthly basis, you've got price consolidating with inside its profile above a green oscillator and change line. That is suggesting that price wants to hit the 2065. So you asked the right question, which is on a weekly basis, where's the battle? That battle is 1883, and you can see that green oscillator and change line has been uh, tagged three different times over the course of the last uh, month and a half or so. So a close above that today, 1883 would be a positive outcome and suggest a move to 2103. Rachel writes in, and Rachel wants to take a look at CKLAC out here. So let's uh, get to that. And uh, Rachel's question goes like this. Uh, good morning, Steve. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Back to you. Would love your take on uh, KLAK, looking for an entry point. Also, if there's time this morning, Pan American Silver. So we can't get the, probably can't get to Pan American Silver before the uh, break out there and then before the fireworks. But let's take a look at <coughs> KLAC. You're looking for, <coughs> excuse me, an entry point out here. And uh, the entry point, as we take a look at this, it's got a nice TD9 count bottom. So that was really your entry point out here. And that was really by the trading session of September 26th when that pattern came to uh, completion out here. Now what you've got is a price consolidated with inside its daily profile. It's a bullish structured profile. So, Rachel, the zone for an entry into KLAC um, out here is going to be at the 323 to 327 level. You closed at, well, the actual center of the profile is 327.37. You closed at 327.49. So really, you're right inside that uh, buy zone out there. Now, not that price can't move back below the bottom of that profile. And if it does, then the next entry area would be that oscillator and change line at about the 316.10 area. That's what the daily time frame uh, shows us. If I look at a quick 30-minute chart for you, see what kind of pattern is out here. And let me just see where is this trading in the uh, pre-market out here. So we've got KLAC, since it's in the so-called buy zone. So traded out at 324.01. So 324.01, perfect. So let me go back to that just real quickly to the daily time frame chart. Okay, I can't remember it. So 324. So 323.77, the bottom of the profile out there. Um, so in the uh, pre-market, well, as this came to a close yesterday, this had a TD9 count and Rhodes Mentum Indicator top out here. In fact, it's really the Rhodes Mentum Indicator top that is the, yeah, they're both actually in play. And this says about 321.66. That's its breakout area. So in this point back to the 324, your entry zone in the KLAC is between 321.66 and really where it's trading right now inside the pre-market. Price closed below 321.66, and it says something else is uh, going on with this uh, trade out there. And certainly if price closed below 323.77 today, the bottom of that bullish structured profile, that too would signal Maybe there's something else going on inside of KLAC. So, Rachel, I hope that helps you out. You asked about Pan American Silver. Uh, we've got a, uh, about a 
less than a minute here before the break. Let's see if these charts here will fire up and see what uh, they're suggesting to us. And uh, Brent had written in. He was looking for some kind of tells anywhere inside the market, Brent. And I appreciate the uh, email, absolutely. And I just was unable to find anything this morning. With regard to Pan American Silver, PAAS right now in the pre-market is trading out at uh, 1728, close at 1725. It's above profiles. It too formed a new profile yesterday below price. Much like silver, when we took a look at the silver contract, this is a bullish message. Pan American Silver should be making a run for the 1941 level out there. Rachel, that's its TD9 count breakdown area. The next resistance battle for it is going to be the center of its weekly profile at 1796. So a close above that would be suggesting higher price. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We're going to go to a breakout here in about uh, three minutes or so. We're going to have the jobs numbers. We'll uh, watch those live. Try to figure in and answer any of the questions that you've got. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing a creative transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we got about 14 seconds before the uh, jobs numbers uh, get uh, released out here. And uh, we'll certainly uh, do the play-by-play -play for you. Uh, I, I did catch uh, Acoustic Alchemy last night. Uh, they're traveling. They're just simply a great uh, jazz, uh, rock-type band out there. So I certainly recommend it. So right now, uh, the jobs numbers are out. I don't know what they are, but we can see that the uh, how the uh, markets are reacting out here. You've got U.S. equity futures have uh, dipped lower. So that suggests that they're going to go uh, target the uh, lows from Monday out there. Now, whether they're going to reject those or not, that I don't know. Gold's also taken a little bit of a dive. It's off about 10 bucks. So first reactions is really what we're looking at here. Uh, you've got uh, silver off uh, down 14 cents right now. So that's the biggest reaction that we have seen. The 30-year Treasury uh, also down about one full point 
uh, right now just 21 uh, ticks out there trading on 125.20. So um, you know, the system here, my system, I got a bunch of charts and uh, tools and things that are open. So uh, there's a lot of uh, data obviously uh, being churned and burned through here. So what we'll do just to kind of get a maybe a better overall while we're in this uh, – time period here where the market's trying to figure out what to do let's just take a look at that nine panel chart out there just give us a better feel for how instruments are being impacted if at all so you can take a look at lights we crew down below on the bottom left hand corner out there no real impact here by the jobs numbers they remain above the top of their daily profile there so they should continue to head up towards that uh, 9271 level a uh, natural gas no reaction as we speak just yet out here it's got a valid bottom pattern as long as it holds a bottom of that profile at 672, it too should rally. Uh, we can see that gold and silver pulling back just a bit out here, but nothing of significance. We take a look at the uh, ES Mini. Uh, it still has, let me see, so the high of Monday, the high of Monday, 37.11.75. The low so far, 37.10 and a quarter. So that has been tagged and so far rejected. The high inside the NQ, the high of the NQ, 11.358. The low so far, 11,335, and we're back above 11,358. So two of, and we have, you know, we can, well, let's do this here. Let's go take a look at the uh, the Dow and the Russell 2000. So the Dow, YM out here, it's high on Monday, was 29,702. The low so far this morning, 29,712. So the Dow has not actually tested at least the high of that swing point. And the uh, Russell 2000, its swing point is actually September 28th. And that high out there is 1731. Uh, price is not pulled back to that area. So we know that the uh, the Monday's highs, at least, are being tested with regard to the ES and the NQ. Let's take a look at uh, real quick. Switch over to this intraday chart, so we can see the big volume spike out here inside the NQ. This is a, a 10 minute time frame chart. So as we pull this back. We can see that the uh, lows out here. This should be the low from uh, yeah from Monday out there. That uh, you can no, that's not right. October the fifth was that Monday? No, that's that's definitely not right. So uh, yeah, I've I've got a I've got a, a little bit of a brain freeze here, so to speak. Not my brain, the uh, computer's brain, which has uh, frozen just a tad. So I can't really go to that chart and uh, make things out. Um, mm -mm -mm. So the the unfrozen portion actually is over on my white background chart. So you know, sorry about that, folks. Just trying to navigate. Uh, what these markets are communicating to us, see if there's any kind of signals out here. Uh, so let's switch. So we are on the white background screens. Okay, you were never on the black background screen. So with regard to the NQ out here, price pulling back on a daily basis. So we know it's tested and so far rejected the top of that uh, profile or the prop, the top of the the uh, swing point from uh, Monday, October the third, out there. And price also testing its oscillator and change line. Five hour time frame chart out here. Price is below its profile. That could be signaling a uh, move back to the 11.039 area, the 240. If it does close below the bottom of its profile, 10.998 would be a downward bottom signal. How will we know if we get there? I would say we'd have a pretty good indication for the two hour time frame chart. The two hour time frame chart pulled back at, at about 12 noon on October the uh, 5th out there. October the 5th was what, Tuesday? What's today? This. Uh, when was October the 5th? Two days ago. That was on uh, Wednesday. Uh, and that level uh, formed a dice TD nine count bottom. That's being tested right now. It is held. And as I'd say, as long as price remains above 11,385.50, then we may just be in this little consolidation. Remember, yesterday we looked at a 30 minute time frame chart. And we said what's really the pattern that stuck out the most was a sideways consolidation with 11,425.75 being the support area. We can see that that is being tested out here. And in this case here, the uh, TD9 count top, which we don't really have a, a pattern. Uh, well, actually, we do. I don't know why it doesn't have a line up there. That's really strange on Stevie's system. What the heck? Well, we got to fix that. Uh, we can do that. What what did uh, Stevie do here? What is that? Huh. Okay. Well, I'll have to come back and try to figure that one out. Um uh, but uh, in any event, right now we can see support being tested. That's the 11,425 level for the NQ for its 30-minute time frame, as well as really testing the two-hour time frame chart. Well, what else is this thing doing? You know, so 10 minutes about the smallest time frame uh, that we're going to, that we are taking a look at. I mean, we can, we can go down to something smaller on my other charts. But uh, right now, what we can say is that what the job numbers have done, if they've sent price back, 
two uh, swing points that uh, have identified bottoms so far. They have been tested and rejected out there. The same thing really going on with uh, Goldilocks. I see it's now off of its the set the uh, the spike low. So let's go put up the December contract. Take a look at the intraday time periods. Now this will take just a, a moment to go ahead and uh, populate, especially because I've got so much data right now that's churning through the system. So we'll let this uh, get going here. Again, acoustic alchemy. I uh, saw them yesterday, last night. The Boca Black Box. It truly is a black box. But you know, if you love music. Who will love these? If you love guitars as well, you'll love these guys. Just a great band. The keyboard player, he's pretty amazing as well. So now we've got the uh, gold charts here populating. Yeah, the reason we're resistance level for Goldilocks is its TD9 count breakdown level. That's at 1742.90. So it's got a nice TD9 count bottom, a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. Price is above the top of its profile. But remember, I did share with you that there is a new profile that is attempting to form for gold. Now, it's actually shifted. Since we uh, spoke about that uh, this uh, um, about 20 minutes ago, let me just change windows and I'll show you that. So again, I told you we're using Stevie's advanced Doppler tool to help us identify new profiles that are attempting to form out here. Gold's profile, we may have jotted those figures down on a pad of paper. Uh, those are no longer in play out here. This new profile, much like silver, this is forming below price. Again, that overall is a bullish message. It does not mean when I say that, that price cannot pull back. But having a profile below price is a bullish message, like when a new profile forms above price, tells us about overhead supply. That, in essence, would be a bearish message out here. U.S. dollar index, again, a 10-minute delay that I've got on here, but still remains above the top of its daily profile out there. Let's go back to the uh, gold chart. So I wanted to certainly share with you the uh, change in profile status uh, for, the, for the gold contract, and that may shift again out there. Again, I'm just using my advanced tool. It's turning all the data and is uh, regenerating information as it needs to. So back to uh, gold out here. As we take a look at intraday charts, 10-minute chart, to see if there's anything out here of significance. The only thing of significance right now, you take a look at the 10-minute chart, is lower lows and lower highs out there. So that's not exactly uh, the uh, bullish signal that you want to see. On a 30-minute basis, what's going on with regard to Goldilocks? Uh, price testing its seventh wave move out here. That did formed at about 10.30 in the morning on October the 5th. That was on Wednesday. Um, not much else that I've got. Just really just this little sideways consolidation pattern out here with gold. Resistance from a 30-minute basis, certainly 17 3380 out there. Um, let me just take a quick peek, see if there is any other requests out, see if there's any requests out here by email. The answer is no. I see McGuppy inside the Tiger's Den. Can you please look at the QQQ on a monthly and weekly for their TD9 counts? Absolutely. We'll do that as soon as we get back to this break. Steve Roach with TM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. 
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. 8.42 in the morning. If you listen at the normal time, 11.42, thanks so much for doing that out there. We'll be back to the normal programming hours on uh, Monday. Uh, we got the jobs uh, numbers that were released a little bit. Uh, they were up 263,000 jobs were added into the uh, September payrolls. Of course, we can believe that uh, number out there. But the market response so far is uh, we've got equity futures trading lower. A Dow equity futures up about uh, a little over a half a percent or 170 points, one and a half percent. For the Nasdaq, that's down 160. Uh, the S and P is off 34 points, straight out at 37.23. Spot volatility index, index uh, interestingly enough, is uh, trading a bit lower, not higher. It's off by 24 cents, trading out at 30.28. Uh, gold out here off about eight bucks. Silver down 17 cents. So nothing really broken uh, just yet. Let's provide the information uh, from one of our dinners. I uh, was looking for profile levels and uh, TD9 counts for the uh, QQQ for both the weekly and the monthly time frame. So on a weekly time frame, that's the center chart out here. Bottom of the profile is a 282.52. Resistance as well at the oscillator and change on a 285.14. Center, 294.05. And the top of that profile for the weekly basis, 334.02. This week, um, if uh, this week it looks like we should get bar number seven. But what the Qs are really doing this week that's more important to you, McGuppy, is that if we do get a bullish reversal candle, and at present we've got a bull sash candle out here, and that just simply requires a close above last week's open. Last week's open was 275.03. You would get a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern inside the Qs out there. Still has to deal with resistance levels, but that would be the bottom signal. I wouldn't be so as, as worried about the TD9 count because you would have a bottom pattern. On a monthly basis... Uh, this month will complete bar number nine so long as price closes below 280.28 at the end of the month, the last trading day of the month out there. So right now, that doesn't look like that's going to happen. This count here could actually go away. But if it does happen and we do see a further move lower, what this would suggest, the monthly chart for the queues, that you, would should see, you should see a monthly bottom that formed between last month and next month. That's right, November. Uh, so that's the possibility. But first, bar number nine has to complete. And in order for that to complete, it's got to close below the close of bar number five out there. And it's too early, obviously, in the month to be able to figure that out. So that's the information that you were looking for. I hope that that helps you out. Uh, one of our other debtors uh, writes in, and uh, this is Snap inside the uh, SNP, wants to take a look at SNAP. So how do you like that? Got to love that. Can we look at SNAP? Have a great weekend. You do the same out here. So let's go ahead and get those charts populated. I can see that the equity futures falling a bit more. Dow down 216 or about 7 tenths of a percent right now. 1.5% still for the NASDAQ off 172. As we take a look at SNAP out here, SNAP is uh, just consolidating with inside its daily profile. That's between the range of 1074 and 1154. If you can get it close above 1154, Price should make its way up to the 1225, 1226 level. That's the TD9 count breakdown area. 
What else do we see here? You know, it completed a buy the D point pattern with that nice big bullish hammer candle that formed on October 3rd. Then it gapped up on the very next day. So that was a double confirmation. You've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom for snap on the weekly time frame. You have a TD9 count bottom on the monthly time frame. So SNP, a uh, very nice uh, finding here because this does have these uh, bottom signals. So 1225 is going to be a key area for you to for you to see snap get above, uh, assuming that you are long this position. So I hope that information helps you out. Thanks so much for the request out there. Nothing else by email at this stage. So uh, let's go back and take a look at the uh, how some instruments here are trading. You've got gold up here right now. So gold now taking a further move lower off about 14 bucks. So where is it that gold would target? At this stage here, um, you've got a new profile that's attempting to form. The old profile still kind of remains because we don't know. So 1695 is going to be a downside target for Goldilocks. That's the top of its uh, daily profile. Below that, we'd be looking at a move into the 1680 area out here. And 1680, 70 specifically right now is the uh, current oscillator and change line. Um, price right now in the 240 is trading below the bottom of its bullish structure profile. This candle here, a two hour chart, this candle will not complete until 10 a.m. But uh, certainly if price is trading below and it's now 1147 in the morning below 1706.90, that profile will have failed. That could set up a move down to 1667 out there. The only way you get down there is price closes below 1699. So 1699 is an area to watch 1699.60 specifically. So we are seeing a bit of a sell-off in gold. It looks like it will continue to head lower. And I'd say 1695 is that next move to the uh, downside. That's for Goldilocks. Let's go take a look at then. You know, silver was the one. Let's go take a look at the silver contract out here. That's the one that formed that sell the D point pattern a couple of days ago. So let's go see where silver is headed to. Or potentially headed to it's off about one and a half percent right now trading out at twenty dollars and thirty six cents so you got that sell the d point pattern that little bearish engulfing candle price should pull back to its oscillator and change line so its downside target is somewhere in the 1979 area out there um the other charts the other intraday charts they're still populating out here but we do have the call on the daily and that right now i would say is likely the overriding a chart for us to be paying attention to five hour chart with price below the bottom of its profile as well as on the 240 breaking a, a td9 count breakout area right now on the two hour time frame chart so all this is suggesting that uh, you should see a pullback in silver now that pullback in silver could i say could be setting up the uh, next buy into the mining equities so what i'll do here is i'll put up the uh, chart if you give me a moment here, we'll go to gold, silver, and the uh, GDX. Is this the right chart? I believe that it is. So this should set up both the daily and the weekly time frames for a gold, silver, and the GDX. So in one breath, I am suggesting, I'm saying to you, watch for a continued pullback in both gold and silver back to their support levels. And those could be generating a signal that that would be the next buy entry into the mining sector. The mining sector, on a daily time frame, has a nice Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom and price above the top of its profile. Now, I'm not sure in the pre-market if the GDX is still trading above that level. Let's check on that. The GDX in the pre-market is trading out right now. Last trade tried, fired off at 2508. So yes, still above the top of that profile. But I'm not saying that that is really the entry area. It could be, but I'm not suggesting that because we still have that pullback going on in silver and gold. That should take the GDX a bit lower. The GDX could be targeting its oscillator and change line as well, which is right now, well, closed out yesterday at 2397. The concern with regard to gold is as to whether it's ready for prime time or not really comes from the weekly time frame chart. That's your bottom left chart. And what we can see here is the rally so far found resistance at its oscillator and change line. Price has not closed below the oscillator and change line, or above the oscillator and change line, has not been above it since April 22nd of this year, the week of April 22nd of this year. But, uh, and you've got a nice buy the D point pattern because of last week's bullish piercing candle. But the real question is can price take out that red oscillator and change line? If it cannot, that's a slightly short term or uh, it's a weekly chart, intermediate term. A bearish sign for a gold and then of course that would say well maybe getting into the gdx isn't the right thing to do so what do we do here steve-o gdx has got a nice weekly and
nice weekly and daily bottoming pattern. I say what we do is we wait for uh, gold and silver to pull back and test those assets that are in change lines. Then look at the short-term time frame charts for a signal. And if a bottom signal, if we've got it, then you fire away to the upside. Steve Rhodes with TF and Ed. Great. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, DXAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. 8.54 in the morning. We are recording today's uh, Trader's Ed show early. So uh, thank you for listening into the uh, normal time frame right now at 8.54 in the morning. After the jobs report uh, data out there, you've got U.S. equity futures that have taken a turn to the uh, downside. Dow futures are down about 3.20. NASDAQ's off 2.19. That's 1% and nearly 2%. S&P's off 1 and 4 tenths or 51 points. E-mini is up 22 points out here. A uh, quick peek at the uh, market breadth. Let's go take a look at what the market breadth signals are uh, generating for us right now. Here what we'll see is the NASDAQ 100. And so, again, it's an interesting market out here. The 60-minute is definitely has a bearish crossover, meaning you have 20 instruments trading above the top, 54 below the bottom. But when we take a look at the 240-minute time frame chart out here, that's still slightly bullish, 32 across the top, above the top, 23 below the bottom. On a uh, daily time frame, this is what's really most important out here right now for the day, 27 above the top and 15 below the bottom. If this profile setup uh, continues out here, this really just talks about a choppy market, not a market that's going to bust out the lows of uh, Monday. Uh, if this changes and we get a negative or bearish market breadth across the board, then we'd have a different signal. But at 8.55 in the morning, that is not the signal. The signal is to expect and anticipate chop, chop. 
If we look at the daily time frame, or if we look at the S&P 500, we have the same setup out here. 60-minute is in the bearish condition. Daily and 240 are in the bullish condition. From a daily standpoint, you have twice as many instruments trading above the top of the daily profile than below the bottom of their profile, 201 versus 108 close to twice as uh, many instruments out there. This too, from a market breadth standpoint, says that the market breadth can handle the push lower. That push lower, as we take a look at our nine panel market update chart, you can see the ES Mini testing the swing point high right now from Monday. That's at 37.1175. We're just slightly below that. The NQ, it's 11.358 and a quarter. If you take a look at that U.S. dollar index, you get a 10-minute delay here, but it is above the top of its daily profile. And again, it closed today above 1.1191 uh, is going to suggest a move up to resistance. That's at 114.75. Gold is testing support on the way back. That was the uh, center of its uh, monthly profile out there. Lights be crude again. Looks like it wants to go target 92.71. And a natural gas should, uh, if it can close above 685, it should be on its way to 737. Folks, thanks so much for joining me early. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Take care. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This is TFNN, the Tiger Financial News Network. TFNN Headline News Update.
Good morning, folks. This is Steve Rhodes coming to you live from the shores of very sunny Delray Beach, Florida. This is your 9 a.m. update, and currently we have the uh, jobs report uh, that came out at 8.30 this morning. That went ahead and turned uh, some of the rally uh, to the uh, downside. You got Dow Equity Futures off 236, NASDAQ off 190, S&P's off 41, the Russell's down 17, gold's off 14 bucks, silver down 22 cents, and the 30-year Treasury should trade out at 125.14. That's off 27 ticks. So what are the markets communicating to us? Well, let's go take a look at the daily equity future contracts out here. Each of them now have, and we're taking a look at the ES, the NQ, the YM, and the Russell 2000. Each of them so far have tested and are appear to be rejecting their swing points out there. Now, I don't have the volume on this to know whether this is going to be a light volume test, whether price is going to close below or above the top of those swing points. But let's take a look at what it's done so far. Let's start with the ES mini. The swing point here, that's uh, from uh, Monday, October the uh, 3rd out there. That completed a buy the D point pattern. The high of that is 37.11. We're trading right now at 37.16. Price got down to a low of 3,700, even Steven. This could be a test and rejection. Now, don't kid yourself. There's resistance right at the top of that daily profile out there. The top of that daily profile is at 3807. The NQ also testing 11,358 and a quarter. We're at 11,350 right now. So it's just slightly below that, but it's also testing the top of that swing point. If, if the ES and the NQ kind of close below these levels and start really moving below these levels out there, we may see Monday swing point low get tested. But right now, it's the tops that are being tested and slightly rejected out there. The Dow, the same thing. That number to be watching is 29702. Now, the Dow's got resistance its first level because it's a bear structured profile is at 3545. If price can overcome that, then we should see price move up to 31256. And the Russell 2000, its swing point is not for Monday. The swing point is actually September 28th, the high of which is 173180. The actual low that we saw, the spike low, 173160 by 20 cents. So we have all four equity future contracts that are testing and so far rejecting the highs from their swing point, which is Monday for the ES, the NQ, and the Dow, but it's September 28th for the Russell 2000. Folks, stay tuned. Tommy O'Brien is up next with the Morning Market Kickoff. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Monday, 11 o'clock sharp. Take care.